right, Zoe, welcome to the show. Uh, I uh, I took your pronouns from the site, but just in case, uh, pronouns? She and they are perfectly fine for us. Okay, perfect. Uh, welcome to the show, and thank you for coming on. I understand that you wanted to talk to me a little bit about atheism and theism, or anti-theism. Yeah, so, all right. I agreed with like plenty of what you were saying, okay. and I don't mean to just like immediately jump to definitions, and I don't want this to be contentious. I figure we could just okay. have a discussion on it yeah, from the perspective of, yeah, like why some people um, might have like you know gotten a little upset in the way that things were worded. Sure. And I'll say like, uh, so atheism, and I know that people play the definition game or whatever, but yeah, they do. would you agree that like it's just a single answer to a single proposition? Like, do you have a belief in a god or not? If you don't hold the belief, then you're an atheist, and that's really all that there, there is to it. Yeah, I think that that's like I mean that's the type of atheism that I operate under, um, which is part of the reason why in my video I was trying to talk about like like I said like I think that movement atheism like kind of failed like the idea of like oh we need to get together and like make atheist organizations and and work together to promote atheism I feel like that kind of didn't work in a lot of ways but yeah generally yes i think that just broadly atheism is just not believing in god right you, you mean like things like um atheism plus like yeah that, that stuff really failed yeah atheism plus was one such example uh the like um the the new atheists which like became its own little movement uh also kind of failed um yeah yeah right well all right, and you, you already covered that people, you know, can have like different beliefs, different philosophies, and this type of stuff. So like, you can have a progressive Christian, and mm -hmm. you can have like a reactionary atheist. True, true, yes. Uh, so on the other hand, you have anti-theism, and I I think I was fine with your uh, definition. Kind of like it's uh, any position that is uh, against uh, like uh, religious belief regarding the supernatural. Uh, things like souls, spirits, gods, uh, things that I, I guess are um, cannot be proved empirically. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, and it. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, it does cast a wide net where they say like they might be uh, in opposition to any type of religious belief simply because of uh, like what they'll claim as magic thinking or like irrational beliefs that go along with this position. Yeah. Uh, then that does lead some types, as you mentioned, uh, Sam Harris, uh, where for whatever reason he has difficulty distinguishing uh, between like uh, Islam as a religion and and like Muslims as as like people as just Arabic people. Right. Um, and I remember at, in the, I think it was at the end of the, his book, uh, the end of faith. I think he actually had advocated that we should like you know nuke uh, the Middle East or whatever. Uh, preemptively, or you couldn't blame the United States for for doing something like that, uh, in Insane. a stunning, yeah, a, a stunning way of showing that he was operating like just as irrationally, and already those kind of reactive tendencies. Well, and something too is that like it, it, even 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 if you were to say like the, um, even if you were to like put aside the the racial angle which is like what you sort of talked about is like that he confuses or intentionally or unintentionally muddles the the difference between like islam as a religion and muslim people as like people from countries that are historically you know belief believe in islam predominantly um like there's like a racial aspect of that like based on like appearances you know like oh this is a muslim person this is not but there is also this cultural aspect that i find to be a massive double standard because of course like um sam harris spends uh, a shockingly little by comparison amount of time comparing how our entire um uh, our, our entire legal system is built off of christian law that like our entire country all of america is just as guilty of being christian as any other nation 
in the Middle East is is of being Muslim or whatever. You know what I mean? Like these religions, uh, like sometimes so directly, it's shocking. Um, I know one that 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 Doe had typed up uh, recently. My partner Doe, we were doing research for uh, we were researching stuff about um, about the persecution of queer people in during the Holocaust and the like initial the the, the laws that were used to persecute uh, gay people were they were directly declined from from Prussian explicitly church laws uh, and they just literally incorporated those as a process of the creation of nation states that pre-existing religious laws were sort of picked and chosen as to which ones were going to be incorporated directly into the the functioning you know law of the land and they never left or they stayed and were barely changed at all uh, this is incredibly common across like all western countries that that christian law um, was the foundation for a lot of the currently existing laws even to this day. Like some laws you can trace their lineage directly back and sometimes the language is literally the same. Um, uh, so it, it's funny that, that like that's something that is overlooked by the Sam Harris types. Well, I would agree with you as far as like Europe, Germany and those countries, like they absolutely mm -hmm. were founded like with um, like an influence with Christian values. As far as America itself, we were founded as a secular nation. And um, there's a, a book about this uh, that like, it's a common myth um, that we are a Christian country or we were founded as a Christian nation. Um, but there's a, a book called um, America, the Founding Myth by uh -huh. Andrew Seidel. And that book goes over in, in depth, like where these misconceptions came from and how like early uh, church followers tried to influence the constitution, this type of stuff. Uh, that being said, like, it doesn't even matter if it's secular or not. Honestly, right. it, it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, there were plenty of people that believed in God uh, or were deists or theists that, like, you know, helped write the Constitution and, and all this stuff. There's no issues right. with that. Um, to refocus just back on, I, I guess, where the ire of some people came from. Mm -hmm. And this is, like, where my knee-jerk reaction, because um, depending on which one of us in our system you ask, most of us are all secular. Um, and the reason why it bothered us a little bit is because when you say something like, you know, atheism or anti-theism is just in opposition to uh, some religious beliefs, in order to get from there to being anti-trans or anti-LGBT, it requires a political ideology layered on top of that. Like some type of reactionary belief system has to be layered on it because atheism and, and, and kind of affect anti-theism is, you know, atheism is just the, they don't believe in a God, then the anti-theistic part would be, they're just opposed, and some might, might say systemic religion, or, yeah, systemic religion, or religious influences upon society, just in general. I want to point out, I'm not an anti-theist, mm -hmm. um, but I feel like you don't have to layer a political philosophy on top of Christianity, for instance, to be anti-LGBT. It's right there in the holy book you actually have to layer progressive values on top of Christianity to move it away from those values. As you said, in Germany, when they were like, you know, during the Holocaust and stuff, they, they didn't pull those laws just from like their conservative thought. It did come from there, but they actually pointed right back to the Bible in order to extrapolate that. If you were an anti-theist and you wanted to reach an anti-LGBT conclusion, you would have to find some other uh, philosophy to draw that from. Does that critique? I, I, I don't know. That's I think I understand where you're coming me. from, but I, I don't actually know how much I agree. Uh, and and there's a reason for this, because I think that like the argument, the argument that says like, OK, I would agree if it was just that like, oh, the Bible uh, has certain characteristics that lead towards certain tendencies. But like at the end of the day, uh, there is no true b biblical literate, like a, a bitter, biblical literalism. Like anybody who claims that is a liar. There is the Bible. It's, it contradicts itself constantly. Like just as a matter of objective fact, um, if you read the Bible from cover to cover, you will inevitably encounter 
just contradictions, like just things that just they don't line up, uh, whether it's two tellings of the same story that are slightly different, that that happens all the time, um, that there's multiple points where the same story is told, but details are different um, and contradict or contradictorily different. Um, so I think what, what that sort of the conclusion that brings us to is that if there is no literalism, then everyone is always applying a reading to the Bible. And while the Bible may have certain features that bias it uh, towards certain conclusions, like, for example, I would indeed agree generally that the Bible um, has enough uh, verses that are like easily interpreted as like anti-homosexual specifically – um, that you could come to those conclusions fairly, you know, easier than other things. At the end of the day, it's still th like there are still readings being applied to the Bible. And what the people who are applying those readings are choosing no person who's reading the Bible is acting on all aspects of the Bible at any time. They're choosing the parts of the Bible that is valuable to them and 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 enacting them. Every Christian, every single one, no matter how devout, is always picking and choosing which parts of the Bible are important to them. And I would argue even – and to be charitable to, like, the Christians who are non, you know, anti-gay, because there are – those do exist. There are, like, a lot of Christian fellowships that are not anti-gay. Um, like, they are – in my opinion, they're focusing on the more – prominent aspects. The anti-gay stuff is not amazingly prominent in the Bible. I think there's like a handful of verses that can be taken mostly from one single writer, Peter, I believe, who was, you know, the, the, uh, the, you know, wrote a whole bunch of epistles. So, um, and that's actually one of the critiques that is like brought up by Christian theologians. I watched a video recently by a, a Christian, uh, uh, theologian who was making the argument that like, uh, that taking, you know, Peter's anti-gay stances as as pure biblical truth is a mistake because there's only one. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is I think that while it is true to some degree that, like, the Bible has things that make it more likely in some ways, I think it, it, it has the pieces there for people to become uh, anti-gay, I don't know like I still think that the, the readings are being applied there, that those choices are being made an ideological framework is still being put on it always, no matter what. And a political framework is always being put on it. There is no literal person. There's no person on the planet who's ever just picked up the Bible and had a perfectly literal take from the Bible. They're always projecting their own values onto it by, ne by, by, you know, necessity. And yeah, we, we can't, you know, uh, we can't escape our own subjectivism, right? Yeah. And you could go to like Deuteronomy, you could go to Leviticus, right. you could look at what Peter said. Well, you can look at wait, that's uh, actually a perfect Timothy example. Uh, not and, not and to all... not to interrupt you, but but that's a perfect example. Every single motherfucking Christian on the planet ignores, with like the exception of literal hermits, uh, ignore the like mixed fabrics thing. And yet those same lots and lots of the same Christians who ignore the mixed fabrics and the anti tattooing and also the rules about menstruation. Like they don't put their wives into like a camp where they have to live their period away from home or anything like that. It's very, very almost, almost non-existent among Christians. Only the most extremists actually try and follow that, but they often will call from old Testament rules about like the one verse in the Old Testament that speaks out against homosexuality or the two verses that speak out. So why why do they disregard the mixed fabrics? Why do they disregard the anti-tattooing? Why do they disregard the, the menstruation camps, but then they choose the anti-gay thing? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, it's it's called yeah. uh, it's called being a cafeteria Christian. It's like you're shopping around for the the beliefs that you want in the book, and if you you know you'll find whatever you want. Like mm -hmm. you said, if you're progressive, you'll find a progressive message. If you're reactionary, you're going to find a reactionary message. Um, and that I, I just wanted to point out though, I feel like you can extrapolate it straight from the text, but from an, for an anti theist to get to a reactionary point, they will have to put that that other lens on it. However, not to give atheists or secular people a complete pass because their answer to this problem is usually secular humanism. They want to say yeah. that secular humanist manifesto uh, or something like that is where we ought get our values from uh, and not something like the Bible. And the problem is, is that even when you look at people who are like literally part of the secular humanist organization who claim to care about human rights, 
like a uh, Jerry uh, Coyne, you end up seeing him still write some anti-trans hit piece yeah. and claim that, oh, we have to point back to, uh, we have to, you know, follow the logic of uh, biology, even though that's against the uh, Psycho Humanist Manifesto in and of itself. And he's once again pointing back to something similar to like scientific racism. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like being a skeptic or being an atheist or an, an anti-theist is going to like somehow you know, um, remove people from these biases that they have. And if they want to find a reactionary lens, they will find it through whatever method that, that they need to, whether that's True. religion or science itself. And I, and I do think I like. that there's like, like, I think that that's, I, I think I agree with you on the idea that like anti-theism and atheism do not bias, uh, like in and of themselves, do not bias the outline or like, do not, sorry, the outcome. Do not bias like your your moral or political outcome in the same way that like Christianity does. But I also think that comparing those two is not exactly the same because they're very different beliefs. You know what I mean? Like what what we're saying here is like to to meet the the criteria for being a um, for being a atheist. You just have to not believe in God, and that's it. That's all that we're drawing the line at. And for an anti-theist, we're saying all you have to think is that like religion is like religious thought is not so good. Whereas then when we jump to well, in order to be a believer in the Christian God, you have to accept the Bible is true, which is a huge book with tons of stuff in it. So they are they're a little bit of a different comparison, and uh, I, that's why I tend to when I'm comparing things, I don't compare atheism or anti-theism to religion. You know what I mean? I com or, or not to not to religion. I, I don't compare them to like Christianity in and of itself. I instead compare. I instead point out that like um, atheism and anti theism are in and of themselves just one piece of a person's broader belief system, and there are tons of ideologies that atheists and anti theists can buy into that end up biasing them in similar directions to the way that Christians are biased by their belief system. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And I feel like the anti-theist position tends to already have baked into it someone has such an aversion uh, to religiosity that they are aggressively going after it. And it's very easy to mistake the religion or the magic thinking or whatever the critique mm -hmm. is to the adherence of that system in and of itself. Yeah. I don't feel like we ought to go after people like secular Buddhists or, uh, you know, like cultural uh, Jewish people and this type of th these types just for having a culture or just mm -hmm. for having a set of beliefs. And I don't even think that people ought to necessarily like go after or oppose someone just for some spiritual belief. Mm -hmm. I only have an opposition to these types when they are projecting their spiritual beliefs onto minority groups or onto other people uh, and, and trying to demand that we follow their religion or, or force us to follow the, this kind of religious law. And I know that some people might have a critique and say like, oh, well, we do that with the law already anyway, and it's fine for some religious people to want some religious law uh, because, you know, um, they have a say-so in, in voting and, and whatnot. And I feel like in a healthy democracy, people can you know, uh, suggest whatever legislation that they want to, uh, and hopefully we can, you know, work this out in, in a way that is fair. But very clearly, based on the legislation being passed right now, like all the anti-trans stuff, we need to have something that we can point to, to say, like, we ought not be oppressing people. And that could come from a spiritual place, like the liberation mm -hmm. theology or something like that. But I feel like having something like a secular manifesto helps as well. And the philosophy behind those beliefs are the things that liberation theology are actually found, like grounded in. And it's not just political positions. Mm -hmm. And just like on the reactionary side, they have a philosophy uh, behind their reactionary uh, points of view. I disagree with it. And, you know, it's like uh, often it's divine mandate of heaven or divine right mm -hmm. of kings and this type of stuff. Um, and I don't want to stray too far from the subject. I'll just no, say no. that was my only critique uh, as far as, you know, the anti-theist position does go a bit further. I don't think it's a problem for people to be spiritual. 
as long as they are not injecting their spirituality into like our political framework. Yeah. I mean, I, I obviously, uh, I mean, if you, you, you watch my show pretty regularly, so you know how often I go off about, you know, Christian nationalism and how much they inject their, uh, their very particular interpretation of, of their beliefs into, I mean, they just truly believe in a, in a, uh, in a theo theocracy. I mean, the greatest example, of course, is theocratic fascist Matt Walsh, you know, uh, who comes up all the time these days because he's like one of the big voices of this movement as far as like, you know, in like public facing people, not like the church movers or whatever. You know, he's just a guy. He's a big video maker on the Internet. He talks about all this shit. And that guy is very open about just believing, yeah, we should be legislating everyone's lives based on my personal religious beliefs. And I think that shit is horrible and needs to be fought against. Um, yeah, I, 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 I guess, I guess my thing is like my differing where I differ with, you know, anti-theists is my diff, my disagreement with anti-theists is of a different nature than my disagreement with Christians, if that makes sense. Like, I don't disagree with them equally. I disagree with anti-theists because I just don't agree that like, I don't think that their conclusion that like all types of religious thought are intrinsically toxic or whatever. Like, I just don't agree with that. Um, but I don't think that they're like equally bad as Christians. Um, I think some people perhaps read my video that way, but I really took pains to tr to not like put them on the same level. But I still think that I should be able to criticize problems that I see um, with anti-theists and atheists even, uh, you know, when I see them. Otherwise, how the hell is anybody going to get better at anything? Um, if yeah. that makes sense. <clears throat> Yeah. I, I've got um, two short things, and then sure. like un unless you've got you know something else that you want to talk about, I I think I I think it was a good conversation. Yeah, it's been a um, great conversation so far. You had mentioned before in your video uh, several atheist uh, thinkers, and also kind of like just atheist figures that you had uh -huh. had grown up watching, mm -hmm. and you had you know named the Four Horsemen, <clears throat> and like uh, Harris, Dennett, uh, Hitchens, and and Dawkins. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, most of them have sadly seem to give up their skepticism and have like, you know, totally closed their mind uh, to anything that is not like atheistic uh, and have engaged in a lot of reactionary thought since then. Yeah. You mentioned uh, TJ Kirk, the amazing atheist. Yep. I will well, say that I also, to this day. you know, I like TJ a right. lot. Yeah. He was actually, I, I wanted to bring him up because I used to watch his content as well. And I used to think that like, not only was he kind of like, it was entertaining because he was so over the top. But at some point, I did start to feel like he was so abrasive uh, to, like, these the people that held these beliefs that, like, I backed off of the content a little bit. And then I was very happy to see him kind of, like, make a turn way towards, like, leftism. And I would say, like, if we're going to be leftists and talk about, like, uh, rehabilitative uh, justice and this type of thing, I think it would be unfair to continuously go after TJ when he's clearly uh, worked to improve his thought. He's uh, clearly reviewed his opinions and even though he's still like over the top and everything else i i think that he's worthwhile at least having in the space yeah i like and, TJ. And, then, and and my conversations with tj have been very productive and also i feel like uh when he engages in like critiques of all kinds of things but even of religion that he does so very pointedly in a way that i think is is not representative of the type of stuff I was getting mad at. Like, I mean, certainly he goes very hard on some religious people. And I imagine he probably, you know, pushes a little too far in some ways at times. But I think that most of his, most of his type of critique is fair, is well structured and well argued and makes it clear what he's going after. Um, you know, so that's, that's my opinion on TJ Kirk. I, 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 I like TJ Kirk a lot. I think our conversations that we've had on stream were great. Yeah. yeah. I'll, um, I'll also say that, um, the last figure you had actually, I think, named was mm -hmm. uh, Matt Delahunty. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I will say that he's definitely had an abrasive style as well with theists. And I, I don't know if he identifies as anti-theist. I can't remember if he said that he is or isn't. I don't think he is. Yeah. But I'll say like, he has also gotten more left as time has gone on, especially over these last like recent years. Like I don't know if you're familiar with um, you know him and, and Arden Hart. Um, um, which is 
God, it's been a long time since I've kept up with Matt Dillahunty. I mean, uh, I used to listen to him all the time, uh, but but I haven't like followed him in a long time. Well, if if you're familiar with Arden Hart, she's like a you know, um, she's very active in like trans circles on Twitter, and she also does like the Transatlantic uh, call-in show as part of like Jimmy Snow's network and all this stuff. Cool. Uh, that's um, they are like partners, uh, so like. He definitely, from how he used to view these subjects, I know his views have changed on it just because of like watching, you know, what he's how he's talked about it. I mean, he's like literally dating Arden. Yeah. Uh, so it's like, it, it was just wild that of all the people that I thought would have moved left, I didn't think Delahunty was going to be the one to do it, and yeah. yet here we are. It's, it's a strange, a strange year for for sure uh, to be alive in. Yeah, I mean that's good to hear because I I did always appreciate. Matt Dillahunty. And I mean, I don't, I don't intrinsically have a problem by the way with going hard on like uh, in a debate or going really hard on certain types of Christians or whatever. Like, I mean, I have myself, I would be a total hypocrite if I didn't say like, I mean, there's that argument I had with that one Christian uh, a couple of years back where I was just like, where the Christian was like literally trying to be like, Oh, Jesus wants you back. He wants you to like abandon your, your sinful ways. And I'm like, Oh yeah. You know, Jesus wants into me. He wants to be in me and stuff like that. And I was like fucking with him. You know what I mean? Like I went really hard on that guy and I mocked him pretty hard. I think it's appropriate. I think mocking, uh, people is appropriate. I just, I think that we should be careful about who we're mocking and why, you know, like, uh, it's, it's easy to be, uh, I, 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 that's why most of my video was about the smugness. You know, I hate the smugness. I hate the idea that just like you, that like these people who there's these people who, who think they, that just because they've come to the conclusion of an atheism or an anti-theist position that somehow that like elevates them above others and that they can just sort of like never have to think about an argument, never actually have to engage. They sort of interestingly tend to default towards extremely liberal. And in my opinion, problematic and even right-wing justifications for their beliefs um and, and it leads them to, to to being open to all kinds of just like fucking stupid arguments that make them look like idiots and i also one of the things that just i i brought this up in my video too that just drives me crazy is like when an atheist or an anti-theist engages with a, a theist and is very mad at them and then makes jokes that are only appropriate to be targeted at like christians and they're not even a Christian. Like it's one of the most cringiest things I've ever seen. It actually makes me like, it makes me want to hide. It's so cringy. I'm like, you're not even, you're making it worse. You're actually losing to their audience because their audience sees you as an idiot who doesn't even know what religion they're engaging with. And um, yeah. It, yeah. It's funny that you say that. I'm a member um, of like, I you know, I, I, I'm in a lot of atheist debate circles. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. I have these conversations all the time. And it's funny when somebody new comes into a room and they don't know who I am and they don't know my views and then they start making like a really bad argument against like, you know, a, a religion or a religious person. Mm -hmm. And then I'll kind of point out like, hey, this is bad faith or like this is a, a bad argument to use to start explaining to them why it's bad. And the moment that they think I'm a theist, they will just say the worst insults or try to like dig at my intellect or start, you know, quoting fallacies. And then when I ask them, how did I use the fallacy? Which fallacy is that? They can't explain it. Yep. And it just ends up going so far south because it's like they assume that if you are religious, because you're you're defending some possible spiritual position, then you must by default like be an idiot or whatever. Yeah. And I agree with you. Those people get on my nerves because I do feel like that ends up just harming. Uh, if you want to call atheism a movement, uh, I would just say the secular movement. It makes us look bad by going out of our way to dehumanize or attack people just because they don't understand something without even like giving them the chance to get into the conversation. Now, yeah. obviously if somebody is being like, uh, you know, they're only there to harass you and they're just being an asshole. Like, I mean, Hey, every now and then you got to have blood. Uh, but otherwise I try to have good conversations with people. I, I, and, I um, think that those are valuable. I mean, uh, uh, for me, and, and this comes from a personal experience. When I was still religious, the conversations that were valuable to me was, for, the first ones that were valuable was just arguing with other religious people on a friendly level, people from different 
religious viewpoints. The first debates that I ever had that really sort of took me out of my perspective was arguing with people who weren't Christians, people who had religious beliefs, but from different perspectives, Muslims, Hindus. Um, and that totally made me realize like how little I knew. And then I started arguing with some atheists who were patient. And I'm not saying that like you need to coddle people because there are definitely some really malignant um, theists out there, obviously. Um, and some of those people really do need to be mocked and like put in their place. Um, but like, that's not the be all end all solution. It really isn't. And, uh, and if it, if it, if that type of attitude propagates too much, it can make entire spaces toxic to people who are otherwise really interested in working with you on a really big issue. And I don't know, I think that Christian nationalism and fascism are like huge issues, way bigger than like uh, uh, like whether we agree on the like philosophical veracity of God claims or not, if that makes sense. Like uh, yeah. I put like the yes or no, like the, the technical validity, logical validity of God belief on like a very low scale of importance when compared to the very eminent threat of uh, of a a religious revival of the Christian nationalist variety, which is very much being attempted right now in the United States. And I imagine that uh, if you're involved in lots of atheistic, you know, atheists communities right now, um, it sounds to me like you're involved in way more than I am. I'm I'm obviously, you know, I only, you know, I, I'm limited in my, in my perspective as well. I'm also busy doing my own damn show all the time. So like, I, I, I don't spend as much time like I used to on like forums, you know, but I imagine you're, you know, these spaces are aware of the fact that Christian, the Christian movement in America is attempting to, to spark a new religious revival. And they're having some level of success with it. Um, given that we are live in the wake of a massive, uh, harrowing disaster that left some people completely uh, with, you know, multiple dead family members who are looking for meaning desperately. And these churches recognize that. I know for a fact, because I keep tabs on my old church, that they are firing engines blazing, trying to grow their presence and their ministries. So I, I, oh, yeah. I consider that at such a high level of importance to address versus like the technicalities of God belief or the technicalities of spiritual belief. Um, and I do worry sometimes that like being a stickler for like a perception of like logical uh, infallibility will lead to spaces becoming toxic to people who would otherwise be able to get out of the most toxic religious spaces, you know, and find other people that they could talk to that would ultimately lead them to being better people. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you. You, you can't keep, you can't uh, treat every single religious person you run to as if they're Darth Dawkins or G Man or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then on the other hand, it, it is definitely something I, I notice in a lot of circles, like when politics come up, like everyone is talking about Christian nationalism and, and the threat that it, you know, poses. Mm -hmm. And obviously trying to like rattle sabers and like, you know, uh, fight it in opposition. I know like um, American atheist and, you know, they've got like tons of lawsuits. Um, you know, across the nation trying to fight this legislation that's yeah. eroding the separation of, like, church and state. The problem is there's so much damn, like, legislation that, like, literally they're inundated. Yeah. So it's difficult to even keep up with it. Like, they don't have enough lawyers to fight all of this, uh, which is kind of sad to see. But Yeah, swarm tactics. Yeah. I mean, and then when you say, yeah, well, as far as, like, I don't think secular communities have the infrastructure uh, or even the goodwill necessarily, uh, no offense to, you know, the secular community to do what churches are doing, uh, simply because there's so much infighting, like the, within even the reactionary versus progressive secular humanist movement. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I thought you brought up a, a great point uh, with Sikhs, and um, like that's a religion that like I respect the hell out of from like what I've seen of it like yeah. thus far, so, yeah, especially very where, egalitarian religion. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, firmly devoted to, uh, you know, gender equality, firmly de de uh, uh, devoted to class equality, firmly devoted to um, uh, to uh, racial equality, like very, very deeply in entrenched in the belief system. Yeah. And they also, you know, they don't have like they don't believe that God like incarnated on Earth. Like they don't have so many of the issues that we would have from like a Western perspective of religions. And maybe that's just because, you know, it, it's, it doesn't matter 
why or why they do or don't have that. Um, I would just say that their religion is extremely based. Like, it's very much about social justice. They don't even have, you know, like a priesthood or whatever. They just have their holy text. Um, and the, they have their ten gurus, but, like, they don't do anything. Like, they're just their figures that pass down their teachings. They don't think mm -hmm. that they're saints or anything like that. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really like the Sikh religion. But, um, yeah, I, I yeah, sometimes I wonder, it... like, I, I, it's something that I'm grappling with constantly, uh, this idea of, like, how do we how do we fix this problem? Because I, I feel like um, community building uh, is harder than ever. Uh, and on that front, that, like, the worst figures are currently winning. Like, um, the types of communities that are being built um, on the right are like militias which are often plugged into churches um weird uh personality cults around uh like small rural small uh, rural business owners um i read a book recently called um oh god what was this one what was the one um oh, now i'm blanking on the title on it um hinterland hinterland was the book uh, and I've, I've shouted it out on stream a couple times. I think it's really good. Um, uh, Hinterland uh, is a book about like rural America from a, a, a anarchist wrote this book. And he went and just sort of like talked about a bunch of his experiences, documented a bunch of experiences of other people, went and spent time in rural America trying to understand the political power structures that function there. And one of the things he said that's like very, very common now is that you'll have like a rancher or a, uh, a uh, you know a dairy farmer who owns a whole bunch of land and a whole bunch of things that becomes the center of political power because he controls so much money uh, and influence in the area and has so many people on his payroll who are dependent on him that these people will vote it, follow his politics in order to get into his you know inner circle that they'll be very open about politics that they'll basically be like yeah if you want to if you want things to go you vote the way i want you to and they'll influence local politics in this way and i just don't i want i and 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 of course these are often in partnership with churches still churches being the predominant way still all across a lot of america that uh that right-wing politics is disseminated and what does the left have in that way you know we have uh in, in this space, we've got streamer communities, which aren't exactly the tightest uh, the tightest form of connection. You know, they're very loose. People kind of drift in and out of them very easily and, uh, and don't get super invested in them. Uh, you have some like DSA things, which let's just be honest, they don't have a whole lot of uh, meaningful power and they're very fixated on elect on specifically on electoral, uh, uh, usually backing Democrats and stuff like that. There's a lot of lacking. Uh, there's a lack of 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 uh, structures um, uh, on the general left that I think is. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Um, well, I, I I want to see I want to see people put their minds to building strong, deep uh, communities that are able to counter these alternatives, that are able to give people something other than the fucking horrible manipulation of like rural mega churches. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you entirely. So I, I want to um, talk about something real quick that like I've never mentioned uh, on stream before or on, on any video or whatever. Um, <clears throat> for the last like almost 10 years, uh, I was a uh, long haul truck driver. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been all over the country, like to every single continental state. I've been over and over and over through these uh, rural areas. You know what I mean? Like we yeah. were hauling masks and everything uh, during like the pandemic. We, you know, brought food to L.A. during like the food shortages and stuff like we've seen and been through a lot of of the country. Yeah. And one of the things that I'll say, like from talking to truckers who definitely are, I mean, like ultra conservative, you know what I mean? Yeah. I used to argue um, leftist politics at truck stops all the time because yeah. like they talk this stuff a lot. And over time, this is kind of like what my answer is to this. And I think that um, I think Vosh has a, a similar take, but uh, fo like focusing the conversation on policy oriented solutions, because when you go to somewhere like rural Kansas or rural Arkansas, uh, er like it's so downtrodden and so poor out there. I understand 
why reactionary politics, uh, like these people are sympathetic to it because yeah. they are being told that the problems in their community are someone else's responsibility or someone else did that to them. And if they just, you know, uh, hate the correct people, then everything will be solved. Mm -hmm. And pointing out to them, because this is how like I would nail these guys down a lot, is I would ask them like, what policies are Republicans passing that actually improve their lives and the lives of their family? Because anti-trans policies don't help their families. That hurts us, but it doesn't help them. Yeah. Or how does it benefit them to pass like anti, you know, um, BLM policies? Yep. It, it doesn't. And it's strange that, like, when you point out to them that even if uh, you you take their point of view and you look at it from, like, a nationalist point of view, you would say, like, policies that harm the people within your country are going to harm your country. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you want to just be, like, a blood and soil idiot, you would still need policies that protect your people or help your people, not divide and attack. Mm -hmm. And I feel like leftist policies are the best ways to actually help these communities and as far as leftist communities, we are going to have to do coalition building with some communities like Sikh communities, with mm -hmm. progressive Christian communities, with pagan communities, because we are too diversified of a group and there's too much like skepticism and we have our own interests that are like across a spectrum that the only way we are going to guarantee our safety or work toward a better future is together. Like yeah. within secular communities, there is no one answer uh, to this problem. Even if you say the Secular Manifesto, people like Jerry Coyne already showed that like you can still get reactionary politics even if someone claims that they are a humanist. Mm. These The solution is going to be a, a multivariant thing, a multifaceted thing. It yeah, is going to I, involve I, religious communities. I do think you, I do think you're right that like um, one of the most effective like debate on a one-on-one -on -one debate tactics when you're talking to somebody who is like sort of uh, I would say just like they've they've sort of fallen into uh, 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 conservatism or whatever. Um, I've I've found that as well. I mean, uh, I've I can't even tell you the amount of conversations I've had with family, friends, roommates, uh, even before I became a content creator. When I, you know, when most of my conversations were not mitigated over the were not mediated over the internet, they were one on one conversations. I've always been a bit of a political arguer. But yeah, talking about like, well, how does that actually help you? Like, I mean, I remember one conversation I had with a uh, Republican who was a roommate where uh, he was super mad about like welfare queens and all this stuff. And I just simply asked him, I'm like, okay, hold on. I just want, just bear with me real quick. What do you think is going to, is going to cost you more, you and or what is going to create you a bigger tax burden? Um, a hand, like a, a couple thousand people who are receiving $500 a month in SNAP benefits that ultimately go back into the economy or Jeff Bezos uh, getting a tax break that saves him 300 million, you know, 300 or $3 billion on his tax burden. Which one of those is more expensive? Just do the math on the, on the napkin. And then he would, and like it, it, that conversation caused him to seriously rethink like rate getting mad about welfare Queens, you know? I'm like, I'm like, why are you mad at all of these like families of people who are like, let's even say that some of them are not, are like getting more money than they deserve or whatever you want to say. Let's say, let's, let's accept that you're right about that. I'm not going to argue with you on that right now. Let's say that even they are, they're buying food. They're buying, they're like taking care of their family. Maybe they're getting too much nice food. Jeff Bezos is, a, is one of the richest men in the world and he got a tax break so he can buy what, another yacht or something? And you're telling me that these people who are like getting a little bit of extra money for food are the real concern? Like those types of things, like the Republicans want you to crack down on stuff that could help you if you're out of money, you know? That could help people, your neighbors who you know who need SNAP money, they wanna crack down on that and they wanna let this other guy get away with it. They wanna let him get away with the tax benefit, you know, a tax break and they want you to be mad at your neighbor or they want you to be mad at these so-called welfare queens, but you're ignoring the fact that this guy's walking away with $3 billion onto your tax burden. You know, that, that, yeah. that that's the type of stuff that you were talking about that I do think is effective. Although I should note that I don't think that, de that we're gonna be able to debate our way out of this problem. Like, I what what I think is the thing is that like, like my my worry is that like there aren't hubs 
there aren't a whole lot of good social hubs where people can find a sense of social belonging um, to the same degree on the left that there is on the right. On the right, there are these uh, these uh, established churches, you know, that uh, can can if you so desire it, keep you busy every single day for the rest of your life. There are churches where if you want to get involved, if you're like you're like hurting for for work or whatever that they will give you work to anybody like no questions asked you're a member of the church come on we'll we'll bring you on to go clear you know jimmy you know he's a deacon at our church and he needs some wood cleared in his backyard and sure the pay isn't great but you'll get free lunch and then you do have that and like we don't have that like the left does not have that to the same degree there is a uh certain parts of even the far left have succumbed to sort of liberal uh capitalistic um de like like de-socializing where there's just like a bunch of individual people drifting along uh buying things playing video games but not really together maybe they play them together a little bit but they don't really build any deep social connections and they've got no safety net um whereas the right uh, uh, to all all spectrums of the right, no matter how far right you go, uh, has a focus on building these types of deep social connections that often are really manipulative and bad, but they don't have to be. Social connections are the foundation of life. You we have to build non, we have to build alternatives to that. We have to build functional alternatives to that that aren't abusive, that don't turn towards bad. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? What I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I feel like what the where the left is lacking on on that front, it might be helpful um, for people to look into something like um, see if there's like Unitarian Universalist churches yeah. um, <clears throat> locally or, or something like that, because people of all faith can come there and secular people as well. And those do end up attracting a very diverse crowd. Um, whenever we've gone there like a few times, there's like very, you know, they've had a large contingent of LGBTQ mm -hmm. people there. And it is a community. They still do like they host, you know, holiday events and like they have like food pantries and stuff like that. Um, I, I don't know. It it might end up being the case um, that even as secular people, like you might be better off attaching yourself to some local community where you can still, yeah. you know, um, help spread ideas of skepticism or whatever else. Even if it means that you end up going to like some local universalist church or something like that. I, I feel like. The well, idea and see, that, that was one of the things that I was trying to bring up in my video that I think some people took the wrong way, and maybe that's my fault. Maybe I didn't word it perfectly. But one of the things I was trying to point out is that of the vocal atheists, especially on the left, I, I was careful to point out that, like, this is also – this is specifically for atheists who also claim to believe in leftism. If you're out there and you're a lefty and you're loud about atheism um, and and you don't have an answer for that, you know – like that's kind of bad if the only thing that they can think of is a religious group that's doing the social group building. I think one of the things that perhaps um, the left and atheists, lefty atheists especially can learn from is the community building aspects uh, of uh, of the right. And I, and I don't mean in like aligning people behind a God. I mean, what are the, what are the, the practices that make these spaces valuable? What are the, maybe there is a, a community, a, a set of practices that can be adopted that can allow us to build spaces that don't require you to sell your soul over to some sort of deity, that don't require you to be aligned underneath some kind of personality figure. Maybe there is a need for regular meetings so that people have some sort of social outlet. Maybe there is a need for regular uh, 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 productive uh, uh, you know, uh, projects that people can take on together. Maybe there is, a, I mean, and I know that there's like, these, some of these things do exist. They do exist. They're not as common, but they do exist. I mean, I, I've talked about my involvement with a local mutual aid group that did just that. Um, and they were very, they were, their doors were very open to volunteers getting involved to varying levels of, of degrees, whether you wanted to go to all of their meetings and all of their, their calls and all of their stuff like that, or whether you just wanted to help out with their projects. And they had some success with that. But I mean, that's one group versus, you know, a church on every single corner that's doing the same thing. Um, I don't know. 
I, I'm rambling a little bit now, but I guess my point is that like I, I find it concerning and I do find it a point of critique worthy of like vocal lefty atheists not having any answer for how to build communities that can provide alternatives, meaningful alternatives, superior alternatives to uh, going to church every Sunday, you know, where you can meet new people and 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 hear new ideas. And I don't know. Right. And, you know, yeah. Well, you, you've you already mentioned that, like, you touched on it. We have the blueprints for this. Like, we yeah. know how communities form. We we see how religious organi organizations form and draw people in and stuff like that. And it, it might be the case that right now we end up having to attach ourselves to some other existing group, like, uh, you know, the uni uh, Unitarian Universalist. Uh, and then, like, you know, people are going to be from all walks of life and all have their own views and stuff. And as long as you're not showing up there just to, like, debate people, I, I think you'll find a good community. And I feel mm -hmm. like there are other communities, like Sikh communities and stuff like that, that we could, like, live around. And then, like, you know, they have an interest in social justice. We have an interest in social justice. So there can be, like, praxis there as far as, like, they're allowed to, you know, like, have their temple and uh, worship and stuff. We're not going to show up there to debate them. Like, if you want to go there to get, like, food or whatever, just be respectful. You know, yeah. I I know that they have like an obligation to like uh, help feed and uh, clothe people and stuff like that. Um, so you can attach yourself to those communities. Just be respectful of them, and you know, hopefully they'll they'll do the same for you. I I wish there was a better answer. Mm -hmm. I wish there was a leftist organization that was going around and and building, uh, I I don't know, like something like Habitat for Humanity or whatever, but like a total yeah. leftist, you know, like ground up type of thing, for like um local groups and stuff. But religious organizations have, like, hundreds of years ahead of us yeah. uh, as far as, like, you know, spreading into each community and stuff like that. So when people want to, if they criticize the left and say, like, we don't have this, it's like, well, there haven't been, like, the uh, modern leftist movement hasn't gotten as much steam yeah. until recently. And as you said before, and I think everybody's aware, like, it's a capitalist system. And, like, the capitalists have definitely tried to make sure that these types of leftist ideas do not spread and that there's a reason that, you know, a lot of this is opposed by the Bezoses and the Elon Musks and that yeah. type of thing. Um, of course, there are there are there are tons of things that are slanted against us. I mean, Bonks Daily in chat just pointed out, you know, like past orgs that managed to succeed in this, like the Panthers, were ruthlessly persecuted by the FBI. I mean, I've mentioned in the past that like I've I've gone to I've received healthcare at at public clinics that were founded originally by the Black Panthers, which is like the coolest thing that you can possibly imagine. That is like so amazing that there are like many in this country health clinics that were originally founded by a political organization that still carry strong to this day and are still helping minority communities, including trans people. Um, like that's amazing, and I I I. I what I want to do is constantly encourage people to think on this problem, to constantly brainstorm and put together ideas and to become motivated to do this, to think about what they can do with their friends, how they can take their connections to a deeper level. I mean, you know, even completely divorced from the atheist uh, atheism conversation, from the religion conversation, it's something I talk about constantly on my stream, you probably know this, that I bring up, like I always, encourage people please build deeper connections with the people around you connect in real ways take those connections beyond the internet and build meaningful friendships meaningful connections where you can help one another where you can lift one another up when you're hurting that's like in my opinion the only way that we're going to move anything forward and the the the, the deck is stacked against us in a lot of ways um you know like, uh, but that's always going to be the case when you're resisting a status quo, you know, um, we have to think we have to use our wit and become s smarter than that. We have to outwit it. And, yeah. And I would say yeah. that yeah. we have virtual spaces right now and we can take uh, advantage of like GoFundMes or like, you know, um, helping trans people relocate out of uh, states where they're at, where they're trapped. But I, I think you kind of like put a cap on, on this conversation very well with that. Uh, so thank you for having us and absolutely we will uh, talk to you later and of course uh, number one rule imps don't die don't fucking die thank you so much for coming on it was a, a wonderful conversation
Thanks. Bye. Bye. What an incredibly good conversation. What an amazing conversation. That was great.